Today, I'm going to walk you through four books that made me a much better AI engineer and allowed me to create AI applications that are used by thousands of customers. But you can actually see that there's only three books here. The fourth book is a secret one that is the most essential, but I'll leave that until the end of the video. For now, let's get started with Artificial Intelligence, A Guide for Thinking Humans by Melanie Mitchell. What I appreciate about this book is that it was written before the generative AI hype. So what I mean by this is that it was written before ChatGPT even came out. This is great because it gives you a good nuanced view about what AI actually is, its history and definition, as well as different types of AI that have nothing to do with text generation machines. So for example, this book also discusses vision models, uh, speech models, but even game models that are intended to beat humans at games like chess or Go. And it really explains the history of how skepticism around AI comes and goes in waves, as well as the innovation of AI, and how you can see that there are different eras where there's a boom in AI developments and different eras where the AI developments are much more cold. Of course, right now, we are in one of those boom phases. So I'm just going to go and, and open a book at a completely random page. This is unscripted. And just talk about what I thought about that chapter. So here I go. Ah, this is an interesting one. So on this page, the author talks about how it is actually possible to trick advanced AI models in very surprising ways. So in this case, the man here that is wearing a very specific type of glasses is recognized as this celebrity by a vision AI model. It's a great chapter because it illustrates that a lot of AI models seem to be learning something, like they seem to be learning how to recognize faces, but what they might be learning is something unexpected. I know there's a lot of examples like this. For example, how there are AI models that are trained to recognize animals, but it might be doing this based on the color of the image. So for example, animals that live in the Arctic Circle might be recognized as such because most pictures of these animals are taken in backgrounds that have a lot of white color. So this is another very interesting example how you can even attack AI models like this because there are unexpected ways that you can trick the model. And this is a vision model example, but we see the same with generative AI models like ChatGPT or Claude, right? Where people are just trying to jailbreak it and make it a turn a lot of strange content that was not intended, even if the model was specifically fine-tuned to not return this kind of abusive text content. But still, there are ways to attack these AI models. And I thought that this was already a great example that I just opened randomly, and that shows you just how jam-packed this book is with valuable information about AI. So this is my first huge recommendation. Secondly, we've got The Art of Statistics, Learning from Data by David Spiegelhalter. And this is actually a book that I picked up in a book club. So I read it together with some colleagues of mine. And what I really appreciated about that is that we actually did a lot of exercises to practice our statistics knowledge in between reading chapters of the book. What I really appreciated about that is that even though I did statistics in university, my knowledge did kind of fade away. As I started my professional work, I did, of course, use statistics sometimes to prove metrics of features that I developed as a software engineer. However, I kind of lost a lot of basic knowledge that I really got a refresh for when I read this book. This book is thus compatible if you already study statistics in college, university, what it may be. But even if you're completely new to statistics, this is a great book. And it's important that you learn how statistics work, because even if you work with a generative AI model that just generates text output, you can really use statistics to your advantage to, for example, test if your systems are actually working properly by making sure that you create tests that cover a large enough sample size. Here too, let's just open a book in a completely random location and see what we get. Ah, yeah, this is a great bit. So here we have a chapter that's around figuring out who the luckiest person was on a Titanic. So of course, as you know, unfortunately, most people weren't so lucky. But how do you figure out who the luckiest person was, right? It's an interesting chapter because it shows that you need to really think critically about all the different groups of people that were on the boat. You could, of course, just look at the global number of people who survived or perished on the Titanic and then get a percentage out of that. But if we look deeper into the data, you can, for example, see that the actual distribution differs a lot depending on your gender or the type of class ticket that you had when you boarded the Titanic. 
And so this book is a great reference for you to get a great mental model of how to split groups like this so you can actually draw valid conclusions. It's really important and it's a great baseline for AI engineers. So these two books are very practical and actually by the same publisher in my case. So that's cool. But it is also sometimes good to get a book that's maybe a bit more inspirational as well and perhaps even a little bit philosophical. So that's why the next recommendation is actually Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom, which is a very popular book. So I think you might have actually seen this cover before. I actually don't think this is like my favorite AI book that I've ever read, far from it, because I will say that the knowledge you get in this book is usually not something that you can directly apply. As I said, it's a bit more on a philosophical side of things. So this book talks a lot about how AI might impact society and what intelligence even is and how it will be interpreted by future AI systems. So it's a great book to get inspiration to be part of this AI field, but there's not a lot of knowledge here that I would actually use in my daily work, for example. Still, let's explore the book and open it at a random page. And here I've got a super interesting chart that I'll show you right now, which displays the intelligence explosion that might occur when artificial intelligence development accelerates. So it's kind of like a typical hockey stick where you can see that intelligence is seemingly increasing with these AI models, but then eventually it just completely expands and it just basically exponentially increases. This is kind of what a lot of people are predicting is going to happen with AGI, artificial general intelligence. But whether this is actually going to be the case in practice is to be seen. So this is what I'm saying. It's a nice way to kind of visualize how AI might develop in the future, but it's not knowledge that I can use in my day job. Still, it's a great read and one that I would recommend before going to bed, for example. Then my last book recommendation might be the strongest one. I teased this one at the beginning, but I would recommend you to pick up at least one book that describes a real AI architecture that you can use to create AI applications that actually solve a problem. In my case, I'm a big fan of Rothman's book on RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation Applications, which is one of the most popular ways to implement generative AI in applications today because it's a super powerful one. If you don't know what RAG is, it's basically, simply put, injecting relevant documentation and information into an AI model at runtime so that it can answer user questions with more precision. And I really like books like this because you can learn skills that won't just be relevant for the next six months, but actually will stay relevant for years to come because RAG is one of those concepts that will definitely stay relevant even 10 years from now. And I really focus on those kinds of high value skills. In fact, that's why I started the AI Dev Collective community. In this community, you can connect with other AI engineers that aspire to become great developers and implement AI systems to actually solve problems. We also have an AI masterclass that you can follow where we build out a PDF Q&A service from scratch using AI that runs locally on your machine. You can join the community by clicking in the link below. And I think that if you made it this far, you're interested in becoming a great AI engineer. So I'm looking forward to see you there.